First Church family, and welcome to another Teaching Tuesday devotional. My name is Todd Lovell, and I am one of your pastors. Uh, and remember that we are going to be coming to you every single Tuesday with a time of teaching to help guide you through your own personal Bible study as we continue to uh, experience the quarantine from the COVID-19 virus. Today, I want to talk to you about the word Sabbath. Uh, we'll be looking at how I believe God is inviting us into his Sabbath rest during these uncertain times. Uh, but before we go any further, I wanna just invite you to look at the description of this video and to find the PDF uh, for this week. You can print that out and you can make some notes uh, as we go along today. You can even return to it throughout the week if you print it out and just kind of make, make notes and reflections and observations on that throughout the week if, you, if you'd like. So like we did last week, I want to start by giving you some time to go ahead and read the primary text for today and make your own reflections. The, the text is on the PDF, but I'll also put it on the screen so that you can simply pause the video and make your own observations about the text. Remember that I believe we too often look to other people first for what they think about uh, what a particular text means, but if we'll simply pause and make some observations, read the text on our own, prayerfully meditate on it. Um, I believe that the Spirit of God will speak into the uniqueness of, of your own life in a very powerful way. Um, God wants to speak to you today. I truly believe that. Um, and so I'll invite you now, just go ahead and pause the video, make some reflections, pray through the passage, read it carefully, uh, and just go ahead and pause the video now. Okay, so the other day I went for a drive. Have you done that yet? Have you, you gotten so anxious in your own house that you just had to go for a drive just to kind of get away and just get out of the house for a minute, get some sunshine? Uh, well, I went on a, a drive around some different neighborhoods. And as I did, I, I simply prayed a blessing over the houses there uh, and the families that were living inside. Except on this particularly beautiful day, most of the families were actually outside. So that was cool. I got to see a lot of a lot of families outside playing together. Um, friends, I saw something that I am pretty sure you absolutely will not believe. I'm going to tell you what I saw, uh, and you're going to say this to yourself. I just know it. Todd, there is no way that that happened. Uh, if that happened, it was truly a miracle of God Almighty. But friends, I swear to you that I am telling you the God's honest truth. Do you want to know what I saw? I saw a father and his teenage son, maybe 13, 14, 15 years old. They were in their front yard and they were refilling the bird seed in their bird feeder that was attached to this low hanging limb of a tree. Now you might be thinking to yourself, yeah, okay, that's, that's a little weird, Todd, but, but what's the big deal? Well, here's the big deal. They were both smiling. Each of them smiling. Each of them had smiles ear to ear, and they were borderline laughing together, both of them, at the same time and at the same place. Can, can you believe that? I mean, can you even wrap your mind around what must have happened, what stars must have aligned for something like this to happen? A father and his teenage son had gone outside together to, re to do something incredibly simple and insignificant, to refill a bird feeder of all things, and they were both smiling. No sports, no screens, no filter, just pure joy in the simplest things in life. You know, in the Old Testament, we see a lot written about God's gift of the Sabbath. The Sabbath day of rest was instituted by God at the very act of creation itself. God creates for six days, and then he calls all of creation good. Everything that he's done, he calls it good. But on the seventh day, God rests. He creates an entire day for rest on the seventh day. Well, what's strange about this passage is that God does not call this day good. No, instead, he blesses the seventh day and he gives it another name. He calls it holy. This is actually the very first use of the word holy in the entire Bible. Before God ever called a people holy or before God ever called a place holy, he called a time of rest holy. Think about that. 
How much must God value rest if the very first thing he makes holy in all of creation is a time for it? Now, of course, I do not want to make light of the drastic measures that uh, we are having to take to defeat the spread of COVID-19. And friends, I especially do not want to try to put a positive spin on something that is putting our global safety and economy and hundreds of thousands of medical workers uh, at risk in our nation alone. But I do wonder what would happen if we understood this unwelcome time of quarantine as a sacred invitation to Sabbath rest in disguise. I believe that we are being reminded of what truly matters most in this life. We are being reminded of how quickly our jobs and our safety and our lives can be turned upside down. I believe that it's possible that we're each being given a reset button in the midst of all of the chaos and worry. You know, this pandemic has reminded us that there are so many things in our lives that we simply cannot control. But I also think if we're honest, we have to confess that we were never really in control in the first place. Our ability to control the world around us has always been an illusion. That's what God's Sabbath rest has always been about. That's what God's Sabbath has always tried to teach us, that we cannot control the world. It doesn't matter if we work seven out of seven days. We cannot control the world around us. So instead, we must trust the God who is sovereign over it. There's only one who holds the future. There's only one, and his plans for us are good and his promises are sure. Friends, God wants to give you rest during this uncertain time. God wants you to rest from all of the worry and anxiety and fear you carry around. Just lay them at his feet because carrying them around is absolutely exhausting isn't it? You know, there was a great woman of faith who lived during uh, World War II named Corrie Ten Boom. She was a watchmaker uh, by trade, and she and her family were instrumental in rescuing many Jewish families during the Nazi occupation of Holland. She says this, if you look at the world, you'll be distressed. If you look within, you'll be depressed. But if you look at Christ, you'll be at rest. God promises us the peace of his Sabbath rest through his son, Jesus Christ. Our Lord wants to give us his rest, rest from all of our cares and worries about the future, rest from our need to create and our need to consume and rest from feelings of loneliness and isolation in times of trial. Friends, my prayer that you will set apart this time of quarantine as holy. Set it apart. Give it a purpose and pursue God with every single moment that you have. Trust in his grace. Rest in his promise. And find the certainty of God's presence with you during these uncertain times. May God bless you and your family. Stay safe and know that each and every one of you are being held in prayer. Amen.